Welcome to this episode of the Secret of Skinwalker Ranch Review, Season 4, Episode 8. There were some interesting people that came on the ranch, and it was something that I was like, there were some aspects to the show, I'm like, yeah, this is great, and other aspects thinking, maybe they're building more anticipation for the upcoming episodes because we still have a handful more to go. And Jimmy, I placed a poll on YouTube asking people rate the last night's episode and 62% said that they loved this episode. Well, 35% said above average and no one has clicked on not the best or didn't like this episode so overall people that are watching this and we only have a 19 um votes right now are saying that they decently liked this episode if not loved this episode but what about yourself yeah i i, I thought it was great yeah yeah i'll go on the record right now i thought it was a great episode um so we'll we can start there I don't know where you want to start. It was cool seeing Pete Kelsey, by the way. You know, I had him on the show last week and then seeing him with his with his um desert <laughs> desert uh, garb on. I can imagine how hot and 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 gnarly it is up there during oh, the yeah. summer. But 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 anyway, it was great to see Pete, Pete Kelsey on the show. Um I don't know where you want to start. But can I do a spoiler because nothing happened? Can I do a spoiler? Well, uh, this whole show is going to be filled with spoilers. So go ahead. And this is Pete Kelsey and his get up as <laughs> Jimmy out my, mentioned. Check out my man. All right. Um, so the episode starts out with, um, well, I don't, but at the very beginning, uh, they're going to drill. They're going to drill on the top of the mesa, right? And so uh, let's get going. And I'm like, finally, here we go. Drilling on the top of the mesa. Okay, how far can you drill? How much can you drill? We can do about a foot an hour. How far are you going to go? We're going to go 40 foot. We're going to tap into the ground. Oh, man, here we go. And that was it. (laughs) That was it. That was it. That was it. That was it. It was an excellent episode, everybody. Go and watch it. It was an excellent episode. But for me, I've been talking about this for weeks now. Um, And I thought here. So we now know, though, that they are drilling at the top of the Mesa. So uh, what's going to happen from there? Don't know. Uh, You're not going to find out in this episode. But there was a lot. There was a lot of uh, there's a lot of. A lot of info, a lot of info. Okay, so I'll hand it over to you. Where do you want to start? There were a handful of open projects. So they started and we haven't seen the conclusions. We haven't seen the results of of many of those things just yet. So it really feels like we are a part of the journey that when they didn't have the answers, neither do we. But we did hear about actually a new teammate on Skinwalk on the team of Skinwalker Ranch. And that is Joe Loeb right here. He's been working security alongside Dragon and Caleb for a few years, as I had mentioned in the show. And he's also part of a drilling company. So they hired him to get a drill on top of the mesa and to drill inward. Now that was talked about near the beginning of the episode. And then, and then um, there was a little like clip near the mid to end section where they actually began drilling, but let's start there because what I found interesting here is that Travis asked, how long will it take you to get 40 feet deep? Because we think that there is a structure there. And Joe kind of looks at him and says, well, it's about a foot, an hour so if you if you do the math that's gonna be 40 hours so that would take several days to go ahead and drill to the depth that the team wants him to but yet we don't know what's inside of the mesa if they're going to reach that object what they're going to do afterward if they'll place a camera that would be so genius so hopefully within the next episode we will get those answers but there was definitely a level of anticipation when it came to this experiment that so many people wanted to see at the very beginning really Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree with all of that. Um, it better be next week, though. I'm going to write Brandon an email that he's not going to want to read if I don't get my if I don't get my top of the mesa drilling results. Um, now, it's, it's, okay, so there were a couple of things I want to get. Uh, I want to get straight to Pete Kelsey because this was this is actually a pretty big deal, and Pete is uh, a very smart guy. 
he is. So they they bring Pete in uh, to do uh, some more topographical measurements of the Mesa section, and so and they they're they talking about vegetation and and what could grow and how it grows and what grows where and and is there certain things affecting certain areas and. Um, they 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 just came off of the Jay Stratton experiment, and uh, uh, you know they took Jay. They used Jay as a guinea pig, and they put him in a vehicle with a. Uh, uh, that was last. Uh, la- was that last week or two weeks ago? It was last week. Last yeah. week, and so they bring in Pete, um, and they're interested, obviously, around Homestead Two and the drilling site and this area and where the shadow went across the thing and. Uh, uh, from the tree and the moon and and and, and so forth. So uh, this general area. So they bring in P- Pete Kelsey, and he does his measurements. And then they go back and and they they Pete goes through the results. And I've got to say, it's different from other shows. We've got results. You know, Pete Kelsey brought the goods. Pete Kelsey. Uh, revealed. Now, um, I'm going to talk about one thing, and then I'll let you talk about the other big, because it was such a major part part of the show. Um, I want to talk about this. Very good. This is live, by the way. Christina and I have not talked about the show today. You know what Christina and I talked about today for a couple hours? Candy. We we, we (laughs) talked about marshmallow-covered yeah, imported candy and it was uh, 10 minutes, <laughs> just 10 minutes. <laughs> but we didn't talk about the show um this area blow this up blow up the three circles so uh pete found this now this is um uh that's the corral area uh to the right and then to the west, to the left, there are these three circle areas, these anomalies, and now which appear to be you know, pretty, pretty circular, right? Pretty perfect. Um, circles happen in nature. Have you heard of a bubble? Have you heard of the Earth? Right. Okay. So the circles happen in nature. It's not an unnatural formation. But having these three circles in the middle of uh, this uh, this area, it's five, over five, it's 512 acres, just sitting there by themselves, now that looks strange. But what is really strange about these areas, that is where Jay Stratton was driving last week and or in last week's episode where everything went wonky and the GPS, uh, I, I think they said a quarter mile underground, put Jay Stratton's location, you know, underground. That That's all happening in this area here. Is it connected? I don't know. It's a certainly a strange coincidence if it's not connected, but uh, this is part of uh, Pete's information. Now let's go. I'll hand it back to you and tell us about, the other area that Pete discovered. And I, I found this to be really incredible. I will. And Brian, thank you so much. He looks like Lawrence of the Mesa. I, I, I was going to say Lawrence of Arabia. Lawrence of the Mesa is awesome. Brian, worth every penny. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for awesome. that. That was awesome. So Pete, he was using a multispectral analyzer slash camera to look at the discoloration of the um, of the grass. So the light colors is healthy grass, healthier grass, while the dark colors is kind of dead grass. He mentioned that archaeologists use this type of technology to look for ancient ruins, and they've used tech such as this to actually find like Roman ruins uh, in in a wheat field, which was really, really cool. So he wanted to use that exact same thing on Skinwalker Ranch to see how how over time the um, vegetation had had reacted to previous um, disturbances in the ground to create stuff like this. And in this case, we're seeing three round circles. And Heinz brought up an interesting point, uh, possible grain silos. I think that's that's a decent possibility that we should consider because we don't have the answers. They didn't have the answers when they were doing this episode. 
Will we receive those answers in the future? I really do hope so because it is bizarre how they're in a line and it goes from big to small. But at the same time, we do need to keep in mind, Jimmy, that these uh, that this ranch has had previous owners and before the Bigelow era, it was owned by ranchers. Ranchers can do whatever they want when they want. So could they have been grain silos? Possibly. Or could it have been something a little more odd or something created even during the Bigelow era? We don't know, but it was something that was really interesting. And then here is a, a bigger image of what he captured when going through the ranch. Again, the dark is like dead grass, while the yellowy orangey is like the healthier grass. It's the stuff that is not having any issues. And the brighter the color, the healthier the the vegetation. And and that gives you an idea. Okay, yeah, this black and white image. What what um Ed, go ahead and zoom in on, on that section again. As, yeah, you can stop right there. Um the the grain silo or the silos idea and the circular there may be something completely mundane, just totally normal. But but what is strange to me is that nobody can see. Nobody knew this was there. That's a great point, Jimmy. You know, it's it's not like um, you're walking around everybody on, on a big field and you see a square. There. That's where the barn used to be. Oh, okay. All right. That We used to have a garage over here. That's where our silo, you, you know, and you would see that you see it. You can look. You can see it. Here, they found it by this. Right. They didn't. It's not like um, they have been walking around this property. All of these guys have. They know every inch of this property now. Everything's been photographed and walked on and studied and, and, and looked at. And they didn't know that these three circular areas, and I agree with you, it looks like five. They focused on three, but I see a continuous line. I see I see these these five areas and you can't see it with the naked eye. All right, so it took Pete Kelsey to come in and and locate these areas. Then, of course, you have the coincidence. Again, I hate using that word with uh, Jay Stratton. And Jay Stratton, where he went wonky, was at the edge of the big circle on the top. So, I uh, again don't know, and this is where our Homestead Two is, and 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 everything. It's, it's the whole thing is bizarre. Uh, I I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what it is, but uh, there you go. And the fact that you can't see it, nobody knew it was there. That's the cool part. Okay, now, but but, but before we run out of time, Christina, we've got so much to talk about. The the the. Uh, show us the four lines and and what uh, or you know what I want tell us what we're looking at number one but I'm gonna say this this better be man made or we are dealing with crazy town. Well, we're looking at straight lines that you can't see with the naked eye, but you can see with the equipment. Uh, but to Pete Kelsey's understanding, it was going from uh, perfectly from east to west. And that was an aspect that was rather odd. And it does look, um, it doesn't look natural. It looks manufactured. What happened? Well, I wish they could have had the opportunity to speak with the Shermans or to get more people from the Bigelow era to potentially give them answers if they have an idea on what this is. But the crazy thing about these particular lines and that really caught the team's attention is that they, they told the rest of the team, let's dig. Let's go down there and see what's going on. And Dragon, he had his little line. He says, when they bring up drig uh, digging, I get a little nervous. <laughs> and, and, and I totally get that. So we got to see drilling and digging in this episode. Two decently decent no-nos. And we got to see both of them in one episode. So that part was pretty awesome. Yeah. And you had Brandon come in and say, I think it was two episodes, two seasons ago where he said, there's one area we were told not to dig, and this is that area. So, yep. was who who had the bobcat? Was that was that was that Thomas? It was Thomas. Yeah, it was Thomas. So Thomas 
man, bobcats are cool. So, right, and he rolls up, and they start digging. And now I want everybody to understand this is this is what this is what is crazy about this. Again, nobody saw this. It's obviously not natural. We know that. You can you can look at that and see that. But they had to dig down about five, six feet. And when they dug down uh, five or six feet, they found a layer of crystals, crystallized rock, which I, I, I still, I'm, I'm not sure what is going on here. But it's, it's look at that. Right, so they go down five or six feet deep, and they see this line of stuff, and and they pull it out, and they start looking at it. And some of it was like crystal crystals. I mean, like uh, when I say I'm talking about crystals, right? Small, but but crystal structure. Okay, so they they find that. Then they find this strange rock with uh with crystals in it. And now this is what this is what I'm thinking. Now I could be wrong here. I think that there may be something completely mundane. I'm thinking maybe fertilizer or something that was used uh, because maybe those were rows of of I don't know. I'm gonna make something up. Okay, don't quote me on this. Corn, right? Strawberries. Blueberry bushes. I don't know, and maybe that was fertilizer, and 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 then, and then they they plowed over that field later, and and that's why it's so deep. Now I'm thinking of something mundane. Travis, Travis Taylor, he goes right there. Looks like a circuit board. Looks like a giant circuit board. We're seeing conductive materials there. We've got, uh, you know, we've got, okay, aluminum, and and these are all conductive things. Maybe it's something that's active, and he's right. You know that we have to look at all of the other. You got to go strange. You got to think outside of the box here. Now, are we looking at something like that? Now, I think it's a big reach. It's a tall reach. But I, I think anything is possible here. Um, I don't know what it is. Is it something simple, right? Is it fertilizer? Is it something that was used? I, I don't. I, I don't know. But it looks it, it it looks man-made. It doesn't look natural, and I'm not sure what's going on. I was I was completely shocked. And again, so were they, because you can't see it, right? You can't see it while you're walking around, Christina. This is stuff that they're finding with technology. That uh, we know something's going on. What did you, what did you think? What went through your mind when you saw those east-west lines and 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 it's, it's crazy, almost like a symbol. It it does kind of look like that. Let me go back to that image, uh, and those are those are the results. And we'll get to that. But looking at this, yeah, you see three lines, and then you see this kind of. I'm not really sure how you would describe it, like a chevron, like, like a okay, a chevron on its side. It does kind of, it can look like a symbol, but the aspect of you bringing up fertilizer when they were digging deep down, uh, I remember learning that in order to just like create an inch of soil, it takes anywhere from a few decades to a few hundred years. They were finding these these striations in the ground that were feet below that would be yep. thousands of years worth of topsoil right. um so could it have been fertilizer i don't necessarily think so but the but the other possibilities of what that could have been was it something man-made something that shouldn't be there or was it something completely natural well they went ahead and they did some potential tests and they sent it over to the University of Utah. But looking back at the symbol before I continue on with those stats is that it kind of looks like Roman numerals, like a three and a five, which equals, you know, eight. So it'd be like, you know, one, one, one V. Right. And, and I'm saying that in like very <laughs> modern terms, but that that's an eight in Roman uh, numerals. And Roman remains 
from Pete Kelsey that he had mentioned when he was talking about the multi-spectral analyzer that they use that to find Roman ruins. I found that if, if we're on this idea and on this uh, mindset that this could have been a Roman symbol, right? And for him to bring up the Romans, that's a pretty odd coincidence if and only if what I'm thinking is potentially correct. Otherwise, it's just too random here and causation does not equal correlation. But going back to the stats, what they found, let me zoom out here. What they found is this very similar to material to when they brought the uh, straight shot drillers in and they received those little, those little like shavings of metal. Uh, I think what was last season or two seasons ago, where when they had given it to the Utah State University um, that they had mentioned, it was the same kind of material that NASA uses on their spacecraft when it's like when it's re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. And they found that again in the ground on this area where those, quote, Roman numerals, uh, that kind of symbol was. So that was rather odd. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Here, here's a good comment. Jimmy, your details are vague. Guesstimating doesn't work for those of us who pay close attention. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Um, the I'm going to guesstimate this. Um, so when when I say fertilizer, okay, uh, which I'm assuming uh, that's what uh, this commenter is referring to, we're looking at uh, a ranch. We're looking at rows. And those are those are with with very unique things in the soil in the shape of the rose. So why would you do that? You know, going vague is saying something like circuit board. You know, that it's a giant circuit board. I'm I'm I don't I think something was placed in in the soil to do something, and that looks like rows of plants to me. I mean, that's that's and I'm entitled to that. That's what that looks like. Yes, that's to me. All right. Now, Stargate Chevron 7 <laughs> or whatever. Um, uh, that's a bit of a reach, but um, that's that. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of something very, very simple here. Let's go with Occam's razor. If we, if we think outside of the box and we should on this, then let's get to the testing also um, of, of, of everything that was there. Having crystals uh, down in the soil, that has nothing to do with fertilizer. What the heck were the crystals doing in, 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 in a straight line, in a straight row? Or are the crystals found in between those rows and it just happens to be where they dug straight down? I don't know these things. I, I don't, and neither do they. Um, so we have the digging in the, in the row that you also have to do a dig vertical, right? You would have to do a North South dig and see what's in between there. Or, you know, we, we've got to figure out what is creating, uh, the row itself. So no, I'm not being vague at all. I'm not, I'm not, I've, I, I've got less of an idea of what's going on here than and than anybody else. I'm just glad that they have the technology up there and they're trying to figure this stuff out. Um, and then uh, 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 we have this metal sphere in this field. This is something that um, they went back to uh, today. The more that I look at that photograph, the image, which is from, uh, if you can, Christina, uh, pull that up. That is from one frame of video from the trail cam. And I've got to tell you, uh, out of everything that has been presented in all of the season so far, and there's been a lot of crazy stuff going on, this, this, this fear is perplexing to me. And to have it just be in one frame, and, you know, and and I know that we've done some basic research into this, and it's fifteen frames per second, which is uh, fairly typical, and 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 I'm okay with that. 
15 photographs, 15 images in one second, right? 15 frames per second. Only one of those frames in one fifteenth of a second, nothing before, nothing after, nothing fading in and fading out, um, is this sphere. And we've got to get to the bottom of that. That that out of out of everything in four seasons, I think that's that's some of the craziest evidence I have seen yet. I think that's a good point. I think my favorite aspect was I think in last season where they saw what they believed to be a wormhole, which is like in the sky. That was awesome. But I definitely try to look at everything on these shows from a symbolic sense, a mystical sense, and uh, and a scientific sense as well. I mean, because really all the stuff happening there, it crosses all of these perspectives, right? There's a convergence of literally every arcane mystery there what is the common thread in this as tom and candace told me in, in an interview that i had with them the mystery is below on the ground and above and that really caught a lot of people's attention including myself why would they mention all of those different things why not just say the mystery is there yeah, and the uh, the aspect of this that uh, Pete Kelsey, when I had him on the show last week, um, I, uh, you know, trying to go to, I'm going ET, all right, everybody, I'm, I'm going ET here, I'm not going indigenous spirituality, legless. Red eye, glowing dog, skin walker. They've, that I, no, I'm not going there. I'm going ET. I think something uh, is is um, under that mesa. I'm thinking it's ET. I think it's still emitting signals, and it is something that is interfering with our own mundane backwards technology here you know we still literally use matches right <laughs> that's that's where we are today we that that's that's our level of technology but if something came to this planet landed there maybe they had engine problems maybe they had to call uh AAA somebody came and picked them up and left and they left the ship here and they just never came back and then over the years a hundred million years, it it's been covered in debris and rocks, and it's now uh, appears to be a mesa. But there's something underneath it. I'm okay with that. And when I had Pete Kelsey on the show last week, and I asked him directly, "Would you be surprised?" He's like, "No, I wouldn't." Man, that's a strange place. Everything is crazy. Everything is nuts. Everything you get there, and the second you set foot, everything goes wrong. Your your perception of the world changes when you're there. And I went in as a skeptic, and and now I I don't I don't know what's going on, but something is strange about Skinwalker Ranch. I think it revolves around that mesa. That shape is there, and I, I'm going ET. I'm going. I'm I'm going ET. I, I really do. I, I don't. Uh, it's. I think that history, Christina. I think that history is going to look back at all of this with an understanding that ET has been visiting this planet and other planets for billions of years. And we're just one example of that. I think that's the right side of history. All right. I, I think history is just going to prove that that is the case. Eventually, we're going to move forward and 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 have the experiences of 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 the rest of the universe. But but right now, the things that we don't understand and we can't wrap our head around and we don't have the right words to use for things like this. Um, I'm going with, I think that a craft underneath that Mesa that's been there for a hundred million years. That's my I, guess. That's I'm, I'm, I'm going interdimensional at my guess. I think it's a portal that has been there for a very, very long time. And the, and the, the, the conduit is allowing stuff to come in and leave. Is it naturally occurring? Was it put there in prehistoric times? Who knows? Who 
knows, Jimmy? But for me, an interdimensional space-time portal seems the best fringe explanation. And that's where I would lay my money. Even a type 2 civilization, we can assume, right, would, would use interdimensional portals. Some sure. call hyperspace for interstellar travel. And maybe, just maybe, it's a junction point. Could be. Could be. I, I I don't think it's natural. I can tell you that. I don't think it's a natural formation. You know, we can get back into radio frequencies and and the 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 electronic stuff that that goes on. to have GPS and time uh, get messed with um, uh, on those acres, uh, the five hundred acres there. It's a very strange thing. You know, we don't hear about this anywhere else on Earth. You know, what could be causing that? I don't know what it is, but I just don't think it's natural. I think we would have other reports. You know, I was talking to Pete Kelsey about this last week. If if GPS was wonky in in Chicago or New York, like it is in in Skinwalker, can you imagine the car accidents? The delays, the the problems with airplanes and trains and 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 your car, your cell phones. We would hear about it. We don't 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 go to New York, right? Don't use your cell phone. Don't don't fly into New York. Don't use GPS in a car in New York. You can't. It's going to put you a quarter mile underground. And <laughs> think about that. That's crazy. So I, I, I don't know. I just don't think it's natural. And if it was, we would be hearing about it in other locations around the world. I would, I would like to think that's the case, but a portal and an entity coming out from it was observed during the Bigelow era and suspected portals in the in the air during the Fugal era as well. So it's, it's, it's a repetitive theme that for those that have visited and researched the location, they are speculating that portals are a possibility. And so that's where my mind goes. I mean, also, as you know, Jimmy, I love portals. I love the conversation of portals. So that just, that aspect, it makes it that much more interesting when it comes to Skinwalker Ranch. Let me pop this up before we go. Brian, I actually had that that thought. (laughs) He says the lines are skid marks when it crashed into the Mesa. I actually, that actually popped in my head. Thank you for that, Brian. Um, I love how the universe works. Uh, we share. We were entangled on that thought. I actually, I thought, man, it's kind of deep. It's kind of deep uh, for for if that is what it, uh, if that is what is causing this anomaly in the measurements, right, in the sensor data. Um, but I thought, man, it looks like like landing marks. Kind of does, said, but. Yeah. I, I thought I thought about that, and 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 one other thing. I'm I'm sorry, Christina, and I know we're running late and and things. And my goodness, we've got stuff to do um, after this broadcast. If you ever look at uh, an airport from above. Right. And you see the access runways and you see the angles and you see that or the shape of an aircraft carrier from above. They've always got a weird, you know, that that bottom Chevron thing down at the bottom kind of looks like I'm just going to say it kind of looks like a an airport airport runway. I I'm just. And I'm okay. I'm okay with going woo. I'm going full woo here. Well, Dr. Taylor said in an interview that I did with him that time is at the center of the mystery. Space-time anomalies keep being referred to as being a source. And I think that as these episodes progress, for many people can be- begin to, to see uh, the the get a better under, under understanding of that hypothesis or that theory that that could potentially be a possibility. And if that were the case, everyone would want to get their hands on that technology because that would be world changing, Jimmy. But thank you so much for doing this review with me and for me doing it with you on your channel as well. I, I think overall it was a great episode and leading for future anticipation on, on what the next episodes hold 
I have no idea. I don't. I don't. Uh, next week, the the top of the top of the Mesa. I think that's key. I think mean, that's key. I don't think forty feet is is far enough. That's to the edge of the dome, right? Um, uh, the anomaly that is vertical um, that is there that appears to be in the center of the mesa. Uh, are they going to tap into that? Do they have to go into? Uh, do they have to go further? Um, what happened with the uh, the horizontal drilling? Uh, right. Uh, what happened with that? Did they just give up on that? Um, what happened to the moving of the boulders? They were going to do all of that and, and, and what was found. So there's a lot of stuff to wrap up uh, yet in this season. So there you go. Thank you, Christina. You're the best. Tonight I'm doing Men in Black on Fade to Black. So Justin uh, Bamford is with me. And I will see everybody tonight on uh, Fade to Black. Fantastic. And there were 74 votes on what you thought about last night's episode. And 47% said that they loved the episode, while 39% said above average, 13% said not the best, and 1% said didn't like this episode. But if you enjoyed the review, make sure to hit the like button because it lets us know that you enjoyed this episode. And it also helps with everything in between. But that is it for today. Jimmy, thank you again. So much and we'll catch you tomorrow on mysteries with a history